Hello. Uh, I'd like to welcome you guys uh, back. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, I think and I hope the class is going well. Again, if you have any uh, questions about assignments or anything, please feel free uh, to reach out to me uh, via email. It's usually the best way to get in touch with me. But uh, otherwise, I am going to give a short lecture, all right, on the reading that you guys are going to be doing, all right, of what we call The Cave by Plato. Now, a little bit uh, of background, and then I'll do a short presentation. First of all, I'm not a big philosophy person. Um, I am a historian by trade, not a philosopher. But we engage in a little bit of philosophy, especially Greek philosophy, because it was very important to the foundations, basically, of Western civilization. So Plato is the student of Socrates. Now, Socrates, uh, famously from Athens, right, um, gave us what we call the Socratic method. This is a method for examining what Socrates thought was our biggest problem, which is assumed truths, all right, things that are told to us uh, either by our parents or society or whatever that we just take for granted. And Socrates always wanted us to question everything. So the Socratic method is just constantly asking questions and questions and questions. Now, if you have kids, you know that uh, children are very good at the Socratic method, right? Why is the sun hot? Why is the sky blue? Why, 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 why? And that it can drive you insane. And eventually I find that if you read too much philosophy, you may <clears throat> in fact go insane. Now, after uh, Socrates is put to death, by the city of Athens, all right, for crimes of corrupting the youth. Um, his student Plato writes down the majority of ideas that we associate with Socrates. And um, the allegory of the cave, all right, is one of those things. So I'm going to switch over here so that you guys can see this fascinating uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. And we're just gonna go through it real quickly so that uh, hopefully you guys will have a better understanding, all right, as you get started reading The Allegory of the Cave. Now, first of all, uh, this is in the readings folder, all right, and the reason I choose it is because it's relatively short. Okay, so we get just a little glimpse of what uh, Greek philosophy is all about. Um, and obviously, if you want more, you can take more philosophy classes. There are many of them available, and it's an excellent way to train your mind, okay? Now, Plato himself, all right, unlike Socrates, uh, was from quite a wealthy family, and uh, Plato is really all about the idea that the physical world, all right, that which we see around us is in many ways an illusion, all right? Our eyes can be tricked into seeing things. We see this all the time, right? If you have one event and you ask 100 people about it, you'll get 100 different versions of what happened there. So Plato forces us as readers of Plato, right, to push beyond the physical realm to understand that there is more to the world than purely the physical realm. And a lot of that has to do with the world of ideas, all right? Trying to construct visions that explain uh, how the world works, how people relate to each other. Now, one of the things that Plato says humans are constantly trying to do, they're trying to discover the true, the real, all right? what's really going on kind of uh, behind the veil, right? So some of the ways that they struggle to do this, all right, are through faith, ethics, morals, and philosophy. Now, that's a whole kit and caboodle, and I'm just gonna put it there, and we're gonna move on. Needless to say, Plato is interested in the ways in which the life of the mind can discover what is actually going on in the world, even though our physical um, touch and all this stuff tell us one thing, 
right? Our mind can figure out the puzzle if we let it. Now, philosophy in the classic Greek term, all right, means love of wisdom. And philosophers, all right, for both Socrates and Plato, uh, are those who help society, help the people in society, okay, really discover what's the, the real reality, right? To dig deep down beyond just what we see. Socrates, right, famously said, right, an unexamined life is not worth living. So for Socrates and Plato, all right, we have this wonderful thing here between our ears and the human mind is incredibly powerful. And if we learn to train our mind in the right way, all right, we can satisfy this natural human thirst for knowledge. Now, a lot of what uh, the allegory of the cave is all about is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Now, knowledge, all right, is the accumulation of facts about the world. Um, Western science is very good at knowledge. Wisdom, however, all right, is knowing really sort of how to put the puzzle pieces of knowledge together to understand what's really going on. And not to bake your noodle too much, but I really do like this thing about tomatoes, all right? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. If you didn't know that, now you know. Wisdom is not putting tomatoes in a fruit salad. All right, now in our modern world, we are surrounded with knowledge, all right? The internet is filled with knowledge. Millions and millions and millions upon bazillions of factoids everywhere. But many of us worry that we are getting further and further away from the wisdom part of it, from understanding what those facts mean and how to put them together in a puzzle piece to understand what is actually happening in our own reality. Now, Plato is very concerned uh, with this question. All right, and that's one of the main things we're going to be talking about. Now, I've already used this word once without defining it, but I shall define it again. An allegory, all right, is basically a story, all right, that is a metaphor for understanding something else. All right, so everything in an allegory uh, is, is a symbol of something else. Now, when you read the allegory of the cave, you have to have a little bit of a suspension of disbelief, as we're going to talk about. <clears throat> I don't know how the people got into the cave. I don't know how they go to bath the bathroom. I don't know a lot of basic facts about it, and they don't matter. So when we read allegorical literature, all right, we are reading in a particular way that uh, allows us to try to understand something beyond the story itself. And many people feel that, you know, our brain is like a lockbox, right? And it's very powerful, but sometimes we have to kind of trick it into thinking differently. And when our brain hears a story or a creative work, we think differently than when we're confronted with a fact. And when we're confronted with a fact, part of our brain shuts down, all right? The sort of uh, critical curious part is sort of herded into another way of thinking. And with allegorical thinking, a lot of times the more creative, the more curious parts of our brain remain alive. And therefore, we are able to ask different questions. And we don't, we cannot get to the real uh, undergirding of truth without asking the right questions, right? Asking the right questions is essential in discovering the essence of truth for people like Plato. Okay, so basically, um, we get this story, okay? And again, the story is an allegory, and in the allegory, um, what you have are these people which you see down here, chained up in front of a wall. 
and they are basically sort of cut off from the outside world. Now behind them, all right, kind of like a movie projector, is a giant fire. And these creepy people, who are my favorite characters in this whole allegory, because I just, I, they're just weird and creepy, walk along what's called the roadway in that picture on the right, okay? And they hold different shapes up. The shapes then project onto the wall that the people are looking at. You can see that too in the left version there. And because the people have always been inside the cave, they accept that as reality. Now again, for someone like Plato, okay, this is meant to represent all the truths, the things that we think are true that are simply handed to us. Uh, societal normative standards, uh, things you just don't think about, okay? Things your parents tell you, things your priest tells you, things your teachers tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you stuff right now. Um, this is all the knowledge that we accumulate. Now we don't understand the constructed nature of this knowledge because we as individuals have never been outside of the cave. All right. Now underneath the roadway there, there's some diffuse daylight and there's a little tiny passageway out of the cave. Now, in the allegory, one of the people basically gets unchained. We don't know how, it doesn't matter. And slowly makes their way out into the sunlight. Now, when they get out into the sunlight, they are immediately blinded because again, they've been in this dark cave their whole life. Now, the person who gets out of the cave eventually adapts to the light and discovers all the wonders that are outside the cave. A rushing stream, the blowing of the wind. That person, all right, comes to understand the true nature, the constructed nature of the cave, that everything that they're being shown in the cave is in fact false. And uh, we are told that that person then returns to the cave and tries to convince his compadres who are still uh, chained up there about the falseness of the visions up on the wall and they laugh at him and they think he's a fool. Now, again, the cave is an allegory for our mind. All right. When we simply accept everything that society tells us, when we accept um, all of the knowledge without the wisdom, we are like the people chained in the cave. Plato is pushing us all right, through trying to use things like the Socratic method and mainly through education to find our way outside of the cave. Now for Plato, the person who finds their way outside of the cave, right, is the philosopher, is the person who has learned to train their mind in a different way to see truths that are not automatically apparent to everyone else. And Philosophers often, like Socrates, right, are thought to be fools because they try to convince other people that the reality that they are used to, the reality that is everywhere around, is largely illusionary. Ooh. All right, let that just sink in for a little while. Now, a lot of the allegory of the cave is also about access to information. Uh, if you grew up in a very closed community, and you didn't have access to books about science and all you got was religion, that's your reality. If you, there's a cheesy political point we can make, right? If you only watch, you know, one kind of cable news network and that's all the information you got, then that is what constructs your reality. The information that we have access to determines our understanding of reality. So the point for Plato is that through educating yourself, through using diverse kinds of sources, all right, through the Socratic method of questioning everything, each one of us, all right, can make our way out of the cave. Now you can think of this in terms of, you know, when you go to college, 
you often learn different kinds of narratives about history than you learned in high school, right? A lot of people in grade school and high school learn certain stories, especially about the United States of America, and then they get to college and then things are a little more complicated, right? And we do that in college because your mind, by the time you get to college, all right, is advanced enough uh, that you can take the fact that the world is always more complicated than we told you it was in high school. So last thing we'll say about Plato's cave, all right, the philosopher, the guy who, or woman who is able to struggle out of the cave has a responsibility, according to Plato, to come back and to talk to his friends who are still chained up. That is the responsibility of a life of philosophy, all right? It is not only finding the truth and keeping it for yourself, but being able to share those philosophical truths, share that methodology that's going to help other people discover the truth for themselves. All right, so Socrates and Plato are both laying out for us that a life of philosophy is an active life of teaching. It is helping other people to train their minds to see the reality of the world. Whew. All right, my brain is hurting. Uh, so I hope that gives you a little bit of a um, sort of a, a head start. You might want to watch this video uh, before you start reading or after. Either one, it's up to you. Um, but again, I think you guys are doing really well so far. Keep up the good work. Please stay healthy and safe. And uh, again, if you have questions about anything, please feel free to reach out via email. All right, have a nice day.